Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. And in today's video guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to optimize your scripts in Roblox Studio, all right? I will show you three simple ways to optimize it and uh, to even uh, boost performance as reducing, or not reducing, but stopping memory leaks from happening. So let's get right into the video. Number one, use local variables what does this mean well in the game i have a part you know it's just a cube let's say i wanted to change the appearance of this part um in the game right let's say i want to change the color maybe cast shadow transparency reflectancy anything in here i would want to change um to this part well, if I if we weren't using variables, local variables, what I would have to do is say game dot workspace dot uh, part dot whatever it is every single time. That gets repetitive, right? And it's not optimized. It's very unclean. So say we need to change the color. Well, color. Oh, when we did that, game dot workspace dot part dot cast shadow. It just takes so much longer than what it needs to, and you know. This is where you need to use variables. So it's just as simple as saying local part is equal to game.workspace.part. And then from there, all you have to do is say part dot whatever. And it's so much easier. It's so much more optimized. Now, guys, the second uh, thing you can do to optimize your scripts is don't redo the same math when needed. What this is talking about is when we are looking here, this is a for loop that will run 50 times. So anything in this code will run 50 times. And what we are doing is setting the part C frame 50 times, and it'll make it go up 50. So it'll go up 50 studs. Test out wait so uh, the script doesn't get uh, executed too fast and it uh, crashes the game. But we can optimize this even more. Um, but before I do that, I want to show you guys or tell you guys what this is doing 50 times. There are six steps in this, which is saying getting the part C frame, finding the global value for C frame, and then it's creating the the new basically user data for C frame dot new, which is this right here. And then it is multiplying it, the part C frame from one to the C frame, or I don't know how to really explain that. Multiply the part C frame from one to the C frame from, uh, you know, right here. And then it is saying to set the parts C frame. It, it's just hard to explain, but it is so many steps and you can optimize this. So it is, it's just getting this and setting it to itself and multiplying and it's doing that 50 times so how can you optimize this well what you can do is what you can do is you can create some variables and that is like I could say local part is equal to game dot workspace dot parts that's the first thing I can do and then I can also say local up C frame equals C frame dot new uh, 0 comma 1 comma 0 and I can plug this in here. So it would just be part.c frame. Part.c frame will be equal to part.c frame times up c frame. And you guys can see about how much more optimized that is. Um, just how much better it looks. And what it's doing now is finding the global value for c frame and creates the new user data for c frame dot new and then it's doing it 50 times. So you reduced to, well, basically three steps that is done 50 times, and that's quite a bit. So that is a really effective way of optimizing your scripts. Now the last step is disconnecting your functions when you're done. What I'm saying this is when you type, let me, let me just type this out real quick, guys. All right, guys, so I have this typed out. Now don't get too overwhelmed by this because this thing and this thing are doing the same thing. 
But look how much shorter this script is than this one. What's, what's happening right now is I'm setting connection equal to the touched event of the base plate. Basically, this is saying if it's not the player that touched it, then don't run. It's printing touch, so it gives us the signal that we have touched it. Disconnecting, nil. But this is doing the exact same thing. Now, if you see what I've done differently, is instead of having connect, I have once. What that's saying is that this script only run once. And that is for things that, obviously, you only want to run one time, and then it will never run again. So, when I toggle this out, and I play the game, only that uh, first thing will run, and it says touched, and when I keep touching the base plate, it doesn't run again, but when we run the bottom part, it's going to do the exact same thing. It's just, it's optimized in uh, a less amount of steps, see, as you can see there. Now, example of this, how you can... Uh, a better way of really doing this is when the player is added to the game, right? Um, you can call once on this, which will mean, because again, player added is only going to run for one time, but it'll run more after that player is added. So you if you have a one player game then you can say game dot players that player added once function and say when the players added you wanted to make a new folder in that player you can do that and so this only run once it'll only create the folder put it in my player and I'll only do it once for it so uh, it'll only do that if like if you're in a one player game and there's the folder so Disconnect your functions when you're done. What that is saying, uh, a recap is if you only want a function to run once, then call once instead of connect. But I'm going to head back to the base plate touched example. And what if you wanted it to run for only a certain amount of time? Well, I'm going to show you guys that next. I've created another example for you guys. Now, what this is doing is this is not just running once. But it is only allowing it to run for 10 seconds. Because what it's saying is doing the same thing. When it's touched, if it's checking a player, it will print touched. But what we're doing is after 10 seconds, we're calling disconnect on the connection that is linked up here. So this will work. But after 10 seconds, it will no longer work because we are disconnecting it. So, when I open up the output, as you can see, it is printing touched a lot of times because multiple of my character's body parts are touching it at once, but no, it's not. It's probably the humanoid root part that's touching it. But after 10 seconds, you guys can see it's no longer working, it's no longer printing touched. I have another thing for you guys is that when you have connection like this in a variable that's not set to anything, when you call disconnect, you want to set that connection back to nil. Which I probably should be showing you guys this too. Connection should be nil. And after you disconnect it, you want to set it back to nil. Because that's just another optimizing method. It's just better. So yeah. Uh, those are the three methods on how you guys can optimize your scripts. If you guys did enjoy this video or got something from this video, please hit the like button or the subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.